Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Huet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Antonio Zugaldia. And we are currently in McLean, Virginia for DevFest DC. Antonio, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? I'm based here in DC, actually. I started with Android 2009. Actually, that was the first thing I did when I got to the country. Uh, I got an apartment, and I got a G1, uh, <laughs> and that's how all started. And what do you do currently? So I work for Mapbox. Uh, Mapbox is a developer platform for uh, developers. Uh, anyone wanted to embed a map or get geocoding results, like looking for places of interest or doing routing, how mm -hmm. to go from point A to point B, we give you all the tools to build your app. Um, Antonio, you're speaking at DevFest DC, and your talk is in fact on? So we are basically sharing some learnings on how to build the next Uber or the next Lyft. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been putting a lot of effort to not just have a map SDK where you can do the usual, where you can just see the map and you can see markers and you can do some uh, usual like tilting, rotation interaction. Mm -hmm. We want to do something more meaningful. So we put a lot of effort into how you do uh, a location picker uh, using Android. Uh, mm -hmm. The typical uh, user case where you see that you are dragging the map but the, uh, the marker stays in the center. Or how you do autocomplete with uh, looking for places. Mm -hmm. uh, or how do you uh, clean up all that noisy GPS data that you get from the device. So we, we put a lot of effort into um, fixing those things and basically releasing a, a lot of open source code for developers to use to, to be able to basically reuse in their apps. As I actually saw a version of your talk um, a few weeks ago at Android Summit. It seems like working with location data um, is not just something about hardware, but it's a lot of it. A lot of it is just making it in a putting it in a good form for the user, which I really, really enjoyed. Thank you. That's right. So every time that you start getting data from the GPS, or actually from the from the fuse location provider, every time that you start getting location data from the device, that data is always noisy, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't even get any data at all because <laughs> you are going through a tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to to give you the tools to basically clean up that data and mm -hmm. make sure that if you're navigating, instead of like showing you, you are navigating like this through a route, <laughs> uh, you actually have a smooth UI that shows you where the user is going. Mm -hmm. uh, also, how to detect that you actually are off route, because we always miss a turn, right? Right. Or what happens <laughs> if you're going through a tunnel? You want your app to shut down and say, hey, no GPS, I don't have anything to show you, right? <laughs> right. So there are an, a few methods out there that basically help you with that. Mm -hmm. and, and we are very conscient. and. Something that we do as well is that we don't take Google Play services for granted, too. Because mm -hmm. right. uh, uh, it's very usual for apps in the US to be able to use Play services. But mm -hmm. say that your app is going to be used in uh, in the Amazon App Store, or you actually want to go to China, right. uh, where Play services is not available. Uh, mm -hmm. So we actually mm -hmm. have no dependencies on Play services. We let you hook up your own location provider, mm -hmm. and you can basically uh, provide the source that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of that is pain points that we've seen developers going through mm -hmm. uh, that we basically, we've been modifying our SDK to basically uh, fix those issues. Um, do you have any tips specifically for like UI that people should look out for or keep in mind when they're bu building their like location aware apps? That is one that is my favorite. Uh, and this is something that we've been doing a lot of Mapbox since probably the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. which is uh, we hear very often that your app should be offline first, uh, that you shouldn't take for granted that the user has a network or a good network at all. And we normally don't translate that into maps. And I think maps should be offline first, too. Uh, not only for performance reasons, like if you have your map, down, your map downloaded in the device, uh, it renders faster, right? Because you don't need to do the network request to get the tiles information and then render that on the device. Mm -hmm. It loads faster, but also you provide a great experience for the developer to be able to use the map even if they don't have any network. And this is something that the, that the SDK that we have uh, does a lot. Uh, it lets you imagine that you want to go from here to DC, and mm -hmm. um, probably at some point in Virginia, you're going to have poor network coverage. Right. right? <laughs> so what happens? Uh, what we do is we let you do a smart caching of that route. So the moment you start driving here, you're going to start downloading the map in there. And we do that actually in a very uh, efficient way, because when you download Mapbox tiles, you are not downloading the actual image of the map. Mm -hmm. What you download is something that's called vector tiles, which is basically instead of downloading the image, mm -hmm. you download the instructions to build the image. Oh, interesting. Right? So instead of downloading uh, that image, which is 
big because it's a raster big image right. it's something very small it's actually text right we just tell you right. this is the data on the map it's mm -hmm. very efficient it actually uh, it's binary uh, in the way that is uh, transported but it's basically text instruction telling you fun this is how you render the map mm -hmm. so that means that when you want to download the map uh, the tiles are very compact and you can download actually larger regions uh, without basically uh, using all the storage on your phone. That's awesome. Also sounds a lot more data efficient as well. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, that's fascinating. Love it. Um, so another thing uh, that um, Antonio does is that he helps run the um, DC area Android meetup. Is that correct? That's right. Can you kind of tell us like how the DC Android meetup got started? Absolutely. And so uh, we've been running the GDG DC group, the Google Developer Group, uh, for a while here. I've been involved uh, from, since my G1 days. <laughs> uh, but something that we've been missing a lot is uh, group specific for Android developers. Because uh, uh, GDG is great to have many topics, but you see, you see machine learning topics, you see mobile, mm -hmm. but you can see web as well. So something that we did probably like a year, two years ago, uh, was to revive the local community. There was a previous group in the past that uh, basically was not DC specific, it was more like Virginia, specific region of Virginia, that basically uh, the organizers move on and yep. they couldn't organize more events. And that community was in need to basically uh, be revived. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we've been doing. Uh, about three, four people from the DC area. We are all professionals. We all work in different companies. Mm -hmm. and, and basically what we want is to hear from any Android developer in the DC area, Maryland, Virginia, uh, to basically contact us. Uh, very easy to find us is uh, just Google DC Android. Uh, acronym is DCA, uh, a, a word joke on the code for the local airport. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Uh, so Great. basically just Google DC Android mm -hmm. and, and basically come to the next meetup or propose a talk. We are uh, very flexible to talk anything that is Android related. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm actually from this area, so um, I actually love hearing that. And you're um, going to come to talk to us very soon. Maybe. I'm on camera now, so I might have to. Um, but definitely come and check it out. And I, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, there's actually a few of our guests on the channel that also um, are involved in the DC Android Meetup, like Anise uh, right. Davis and Mike Evans as and, well. And Jared is also another another founder member of the DC Android Meetup. Uh, oh, and uh, Jared Sheehan, who um, helped yeah. run the Android Summit and is also yeah. here today. If you're in the area and if you like Android, um, definitely come to the Meetup. And if you're interested in speaking, uh, talk to Antonio. Antonio, thank you so much for uh, chatting with us today. My pleasure. Thank and, you for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. And um, if people wanted to find you on the internet, uh, how can they do that? Easiest way, uh, just go to Twitter, uh, look for my last name, Zugaldia. Uh, lucky thing of having a weird last name is that I could <laughs> get the handle. You could just get it. And yeah, I, I check it often, so just tweet at me. Awesome, and thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.